Hey there, Aureli here from withhisgifts.com. Welcome and thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you my craft room, the place where I transform paper into little works of art. And I hope that you can get some inspiration um, to create a space of your own. And especially for those of you on a budget, I hope that you can take away some tips for how to create a craft room on a budget. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and open up my very squeaky door. Almost sounds like a horror movie um but anyways here it is um let me turn on the light is that on there we go so this is the craft room and this is the view from the doorway so i'm gonna go ahead and come inside my craft room i'm gonna close the squeaky door behind me and then i'm gonna ask for grace as i maneuver this very tiny space um, and try to hold the camera still without shaking um, filming a video while holding a camera is not my specialty, so I apologize in advance for any shakiness. I will have photos at the end of the video, um, some still photos that will show you the space, because um, I really want you to take away inspiration and um, tips for your very own craft space. So I will start by panning. There is a door that we came in through. I'm going to pan the room, okay, and my workspace, and then my printer. And I have some storage cubes here and some embellishment centers. Um, going around and moving around as I go because um, it's difficult to stand in the center of my room and pan. Um, it is a tiny space. Um, I don't know the exact dimensions. Um, here's the last wall. And if I went too fast, I apologize. Um, there will be another pan at the end. And then we're going to go over detail. But the dimensions, I don't know, but it is a small space. But... Small space, um, strategically placed furniture. Um, you can open up the space and it doesn't seem that small. Um, it's just maneuvering and filming in here that's gonna be a little bit challenging. So thank you for your grace in advance. So this is the door to the right of, or the door, the wall to the right of the door as we come in, or to the left as we come in. But anyways, this is how I stored, how I store my ink pads. And this is a find um, so here's tip number one, um, thrift store. It's um, an old CD holder that I have repurposed to hold my ink pads. Um, it's perfect for it. My ink pads fit in there nice and snug. It's They're accessible. I can see the colors. Um, my top here are um, stamping up. And then these down below here are um, ink pads that my grandsons use when they're in here. Um, stamping with their stamps. So um, tip number one, like I said, is to frequent your thrift stores. There's always a deal in there. And in fact, get to know the regular employees because they can give you the scoop on when new merchandise is placed on the floor so that you can plan your um, visits and increase your chances of scoring um, with a treasure. So yeah, so there's tip number one. Um, coming down on that wall, this is my workspace. So this is where I create, this is where all the magic happens. And it really is never, ever, ever this clean. I cleaned it up just for you because I knew you were coming. Um, but yeah, my saying is the messier your craft area, the more creative juices are flowing. But that's my saying. It doesn't mean that's the case for everybody. Some people are completely opposite than me and that's okay too. Um, things that I like to keep close to me in this area are in that drawer right there the little drawer um thingy the top drawer contains my adhesives the middle drawers are spritzers and blenders and then the bottom are some embossing folders um over in the basket there are my blocks for my stamps behind the basket um my piercing mat so when i'm stamping with the photopolymer um stamps or um, shaping flowers um there is a photo of my family and then here's my um, stamp scrubber, so my stamp cleaner. And then also on this table are some, ooh, what are the names of the lights? I lose words all the time. All the time I lose words and I can't find them. Natural light, there we go. Natural light hobby lamps. And they retail for about 60 bucks a piece, but um, I scored them for $10 a piece. So let me share tip number two with you um, when putting together a budget um, craft room. Um, Google your area for um, 
outlet stores, um, outlet craft stores in particular. We um, are home to um, the largest distributor of craft supplies in the world. Notions Marketing, um, they distribute all over the world. Um, and Notions Marketing sells to, um, they sell wholesale to online stores, brick and mortar stores. But then they have a consumer website. It's scrapbook warehousing, scrapbookingwarehouse.com. Yeah, scrapbookingwarehouse.com. And they get stuff um, that they sell on there. Um, and when they get shipments in their warehouse where the packaging is damaged, um, they have an outlet store, which is a brick and mortar here locally. Um, and they get transferred to the outlet store and we make out like bandits because that's where I got those two lamps. They, they arrived in packaging that was in pretty bad shape and they couldn't sell them. So they transferred over to the outlet store and the price was drastically reduced. So 10 bucks a piece. Google your area. Um, you'd be surprised at what you find. Um, when I'm going to be in a town that I've never been in and I'm going to spend some days there and I'm looking for things to do, I will Google before I arrive and find the stores if there are some in the area because... I am always looking for a deal. So thrift stores and outlet stores, look for them, know them well, stock them, know when they're open and all that stuff. Sign up for their email list, all of that good stuff. Okay. So the next to my workstation is my printer. Now I do like to save money, but technology is not somewhere that you want to go cheap. It doesn't mean that you need to spend a lot of money either. Um, I am in the technology field. Um, that's what I do for my day job so I can appreciate good and reliable technology. So, But you always can find a deal. Um, so when you're on the market or in the market, whichever one of those phrases is correct, for some technology, do your research and find the best price. Put the internet to work for you um, and then go ahead and find that price. This particular printer is laser. It does duplex printing. It's wireless, which means I can print for my laptop, computer, my wireless device. I mean, it's pretty amazing. It's color and it's laser. And um, normally it retails over $500, but I found it um, on sale um, and I paid just under $200 at Best Buy online. Picked it up in the store, so saved shipping. Um, so yeah, look for those deals. They're out there. They're just waiting for you to find them. So that's tip number three. Um, when you have to buy new, always find the best deal. So moving on, um, here are moving, because this is a better view over here of this wall, my tiny space. Um, I have a set of Jet Max cubes that are, um, that were recently, or not recently, previously, um, sold by Michaels. They're not available anymore. Michaels does offer um, storage cubes. I think they're called Recollection now. Um, and they're about the same size, I think. Um, some of the configuration is different. Um, so some of the configuration that you see here may not be available in the Recollections um, line. And some of the configuration the Recollections line may not be available in the old Jet Max. But anyways, they're similar. Um, and retail... Um, these cubes, there's 12 cubes and I have two embellishment centers and then that um, piece on my wall there. Retail, all those, all those pieces currently will go for about $600 and I'm not trying to spend $600. <laughs> I like my money and I can find better things to do with that money. So I'm always looking for a deal. And Craigslist, tip number three, um, always check Craig, Craigslist. I found those pieces on Craigslist there was they were being sold by a woman who was young um married a few years and had a couple of young children and um you know decided that she was going to devote her time to being a mom which is understandable and um did not have time to craft anymore so she had to get rid of all her stuff so after I was sad for her for a little bit because come on she can't craft anymore um how sad is that um well, you know, I got over that. Um, it was her choice, and um, she was going to fill her life with her children, which is awesome. But I scored because I got all these pieces, 15 pieces, for $50. $50. We met in a parking lot. I gave her $50. 
moved him from her minivan to my SUV. The deal was closed. I brought him home. That was a few years ago. Um, and yeah, they have been good to me. Anything in my craft room gets loved. Trust me. Um, I am not, you know, um, uh, uh, I don't know. I lost my words, but anything in my craft room gets loved. It gets used. Um, so the fact that these are still holding up after she used them for some years and now I've used them for some years, this is some pretty good stuff. So yeah. Um, and let me show you how I use them. So the embellishment centers hold, um, projects that I have worked on and I want to display, um, so just like that. And then the top of my cubes, I have my carousel here that I got from Michael's using my 40% coupon. Um, and it holds my scissors and some punches and other things. It used to sit on my workspace over there, but it is kind of bulky and my workspace is tiny. So I figured my whole entire craft room is not that big. So if I need to get up and get something, it's not going to take me very long to do that. So I'm good. Um, it works out. I get up, get what I need, and I'm back. Um, within a millisecond or two so it works out and by the way the workstation that I showed you it's a folding table that I got from Big Lots it's a four foot table for um, $25 so another another bonus you don't need an expensive desk to work on okay so next to my carousel are some cards that I received from some fellow demonstrators and customers um, for birthday and other um, different occasions stamping up um, promotions and stuff um, and then this is a bin that I got from my downline for my birthday. It's a trash bin. And if you're a demonstrator, it's good to take on you, um, take on you, take with you, um, to, um, your card classes or workshops. Gives you a place for your guests to put their trash. So making cleanup at the end easier. So, um, this was a gift, like I said, from my downline, Trisha. Thank you, Trisha. I love it. She had it embroidered with my um, company name with his gifts and the lovely little butterfly. So next to that is a box. Um, and I don't know how many of you would recognize this from my website. It is um, a photo of this box is featured um, on my banner um, on my website. This is um, the very first box that I altered many, many years ago. Um, I've altered boxes since then. Um, I usually will gift them. Um, this one I kept. Um, I love the way this box turned out. All of my favorite colors are in it. Um, so yeah, it's a box that I keep and I like to display. I do have a video. I don't make the box on the video, but I do walk through how I made it and what I used to make it. So if you're interested, um, find that video. Um, and I think it might actually be the first, no, maybe the first or second video. I made videos long, long ago and then, then stopped and then started again so um anyways it's there okay the last thing on the top here is my bible um my bible is never far away from me everything that i do um starts and ends with jesus um and that includes my crafting so crafting always starts with prayer because without him gifting me with my talents i wouldn't be able to do any of this so i am always grateful to him for that um so yeah now down below i have a paper pumpkin here I have my 6x6 six six, um, designer series paper packs. Um, this is a catalog that I had bound because I thought it was a trendy, th trendy thing to do. I saw a lot of demonstrators doing it and it works out fine for them. But for me, it just didn't work out. The pages didn't flip fast enough and I was even ripping pages. I don't know if my... Um, the binding, the, the, the spiral thingy is too small, but it just didn't work for me. So it's there. Um, it's pretty, um, but I don't use it. Below that are some magazines that I use for um, creative inspiration. Here's a project that I've started, haven't finished. My go-to um, mixed media and art journaling um, medias. Here is my art journal. Next to that is my cardstock and how I store that. And this is a system that I um, learned um, from watching Jennifer McGuire. She is the queen of organization and her paper um, storing um, tip um, has, I've adopted it. It works great. This is a magazine holder from um, the container store. And then these are job holders from 
Office Depot. And each individual or a job holder holds an individual color. And then the magazine holder holds five colors. So two magazine holders holds an entire color family for me. So here are my brights and then my regals, my subtles, and then my end colors. My neutrals are stored somewhere else and we'll get to that when we get over to that area. Here is my scoreboard envelope punch. Here are some Stampin' Success magazines that, um, magazine that is available to demonstrators. Um, we can look to them for inspiration and for staying on top of everything Stampin' Up! so that we can better serve you, our customers. Down below, I have my Stampin' Up! or not my Stampin' Up! but yeah, Stampin' Up! but um, Big Shot um, acrylic plates and platforms and um, my heat tool, some specialty paper that includes vellum and watercolor paper. Um, the rest is empty. Here I have cards that I've made and wasn't happy with the end result. Um, so they get stored in there. I don't throw them away because I will go through that every now and then and can find ways to repurpose them. Either cut them up um, and put them in my art journal or, you know, some other repurposing that normally I can find. Um, cause you know me, I like to repurpose, um, and my markers are here. I have designer series paper 12 by 12s here. And then in my drawers, I have here, um, my framelets and thinlets dies. Next to that are my embossing folders, including a homemade one, um, that I have a video for. Um, here are... Sponge dabbers, brayers. I usually have sponges in here. I need to reorder some. I do have sponges, um, just not any new one that I like to keep a stash of them. So here are some card kits from my classes that um, I have extra of. And here, um, oops, computer paper, that was boring. And here are some Stampin' Up! Um, kits that I like to keep on hand. Um, in this drawer, I have all of my Stampin' Up! ribbons and embellishments, and here I have, um, adhesive refills and stuff. This one is empty. Then moving on, this is, ooh, squeaky, and this is non-Stampin' Up! stuff that I use in my projects. Um, and then here are things that I come across that, um, I... Just stash in here because I think that they would be the start to something great and beautiful. And I will store it in there until um, I find time to use it. Okay, so the rest of the stuff is empty. <coughs> now, this here holds a shadow box that I made with my grandson's name, my paper towels. Here's a couple of drawers and these just hold batteries and non-crafty, non-fun things. But we need them. And then there's a shelf. That you could use for storing supplies. I use it to display um, things and I will usually swap out what is being displayed. Currently it is a mixed media canvas that I created. I do have a video for how I created it so you can go check that out if you'd like. Okay so there's that wall. There's my Bluetooth speaker um, so that I can listen to music while I'm working. And I'm backing up so you can see this wall here. So we're moving on and I have another workstation there. So I create in the first workstation that I showed you and I actually film here. Um, there's better lighting there for filming. I'm more, I'm more comfortable over here. Maybe because the back is, my back is to the door here. Um, I don't know. I'm just not comfortable creating in that spot. I am more comfortable in the spot that I showed you first. So, so here is where I film and there's my... Um, video camera with my tripod and ex arm extension. Um, there is an outlight light that I got um, from the same um, craft outlet store for I think it was 15 bucks. Um, what else? Oh, I use that space for um, cutting. So when I'm cutting and um, assembling packets for my classes, I use that space as well for that. Okay. There is another table. This is another same four foot table from Big Lots and I have a third table that I keep in the closet that I will get out if I need more space but that one doesn't stay out because there's no room. So 
The shelving unit next to this table is mostly business. I do have my Carl Cutter and Stampin' Up! trimmer up top. My Big Shot, here is where I have my neutral cardstock. That is my Stampin' Up! demonstrator manual because I need to stay on top of all the policies so that I can better serve you, my customer. Um, yes. The next um, shelf here holds all my shipping supplies. So it's what I use to package up my card kits and mail them off to you um, so they can get there nice and safe and quickly for you. Next shelf here is kind of random. I have some um, catalogs. I do have catalogs that I store in the closet behind me, but I have a handful here so I can quickly access them when I need to mail one. Here are my business cards. My labeler is back there. I have some sponges and my daubers are in here. This Coke bottle. Um, there was this line of designer bottles that came out and I thought, oh, how cool. I'm going to collect them. But I bought one and never really went back for another one. So, um, yeah. And that's where that is. That's what it's there. I might drink that um, <laughs> this summer, actually. Anyways, um, my stamp and spritzer is here. And then in the bins down below are more of the, the shipping things. So as this these supplies are depleted, I just refill from the bins. So yeah. Okay, so my apologies. My printer was doing something freaky over there and making some noises. I had to cut off my filming and take care of that but I'm back so um, I was here so moving on from this shelf which came from Big Lots um, $25 um, so bargain bargain again um, you don't need expensive furniture um, unless you want to you know that's good too but again I can find better things to do with my money um, but $25 at Big Lots for that and it holds a lot of stuff and yeah so this here is a piece that I found at um, an antique store and that cost $60 and that is pretty pricey as far as I'm concerned but it was I had a gift card for my birthday and it is um, what I decided to get um, so I got it as a present for myself and actually my co-workers gifted me the gift card and I purchased that with it and um, it currently houses some old wood stamps and some markers that my grandsons use. So this is their domain in here. They know that these are things, along with the stamps that I showed you earlier, are things that they can use without permission. Um, anything else they need to get permission because you know how that goes. You know, you know, you know how you and your supplies are. So you don't, we don't share supplies. We don't. <laughs> Um, but anyways, so that's kind of an alcove in there. There's a closet behind this wall. We're not going to go in that closet because we're just not. Trust me, you don't want to go in there. Anyways, this wall has some shelves. And um, here are my Stampin' Up! punches and some more um, projects that I have um, that I've made. Some cards. This is a piece that I found um, at a thrift store and I thought it was really cute. and has some ribbon on it. Um, below is where I keep my grid paper. And then the shelf that it's sitting up on top is another piece that I got from Big Lots. I believe this one was $15 or $20. And it holds all my stamp sets. They're in alphabetical order. And there are a few on the end here. I don't know if you can see the red dots. But that means they're retired. Um, but I did love them. So I didn't get rid of them. Um, because I'm a hoarder of some things. Um, in this bin here, I have my um, scrap paper. And then in this bin here, I have um, markers that are non-stampin' up. Um, some Prismacolor pencils and some Copic markers. Um, and then I'm going to come around here back to my printer because it didn't go in the drawers underneath. Um, first drawer holds my acrylic paints. And the second drawer holds some mixed media stuff. So my pan pastels, gelatos and other gels and brushes and things that I used for art journaling and mixed media. So, um, but yeah, that is my room. It was pretty quick and easy to go through. It's a tiny space. Um, I hope that you got, uh, I'm going to pan through here and talk one last time, but I hope that you got some inspiration and some tips for how to pull together a craft room on a budget because you don't need a whole lot of money in order to create a space that is both beautiful and functional. You really, really don't. Um, and I hope that you got some inspiration and tips from my craft room. 
and there will be some still photos to follow. Thank you so much for stopping by um, and have a great day. Thank you.